to welcome and please help me do that with a big round of applause for our prestigious keynote address by Mr. Sadeep Singh, Vice President and Head of Customer Experience from SAP India Subcontinent. A big round of applause for Mr. Sadeep Singh. <laughs> Mr. Singh, we are delighted and glad to have you here today. And the stage is all yours for the keynote address. Mike. A very good morning to all of you. Hope you can hear me. It's a very pleasant day today. And uh, I think the weather is really good in Mumbai. So, uh, so I thought, uh, you know, so we get to work with a lot of customers across industries, across geographies. So it'll be a good idea to share with you what is driving the CX industry today. What are the core principles which matter? So it's our take on that. So that's what I would want to talk through today. So, so four key principles is what we are going to cover uh, in, this, in this regard. So, so the first one I want to talk about is, uh, if you can go to the slide. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, CX uh, encompasses everything which deals with the way customers engage with organizations. Uh, that's the core definition of CX, right? Uh, that is the medium in which customers interact with our organizations. Uh, they know about our organizations, they experience it, and they continue to deal with them if they feel it's in line with their expectations. Otherwise, they switch to alternate places. So historically, uh, most organizations evolved from selling products and services, right? And uh, CX was a medium to interact. It was just a portal into what the company offers in terms of product or a service. I think that is drastically altered now. Today, it's reversed. It is the front office, which is the medium which is driving the way organizations work to deliver and meet those expectations. I think that's a fundamental shift. So what this means is, if the customer wants, organizations are going even beyond what they sell or what they create just to meet the customer expectations. I think marketplaces are classic examples of that. So a company selling one product, for example, paints, today is catering painters, influencers, interior decor just because customers want it, not because they are manufacturing it. So I think that's a fundamental shift. And going forward, if these two parts of the organization don't work in tandem, it will be difficult to compete and differentiate in the marketplace. So that's the first principle. Uh, what we are seeing is a very, very tight integration, a very, very s simplified integration, which enables a seamless flow. So what this also means is all these functions which are in the back office, whether it's your operations, whether it's customer service, whether it's procurement, whether it's your partner ecosystem, they all have to come together to create an experience. Otherwise, experience in itself is nothing if it's not fulfilled by all the parts of the organization. I think one of the classic examples, the success story which we talk in the Indian market today uh, is the India stack, which is UPI, right? It's a classic example of this, where government came in to build this bridge between the front office and the back office. Back office in this case being the core banking or the banks, front office being anyone who can create an innovative interface. In, look at the kind of innovation it has unleashed. It has led to adoption. I think at the end, the end goal is adoption. So that is what this integration does. So very, very key, very, very important. Uh, the second principle which builds on this one, if we agree on this one, is how agile this stack is. So can we absorb new technologies? Because technology, technical innovation keeps happening. It will continue to happen at a much, much faster pace as we move forward. The innovation is driven by mostly consumer companies. I think they lead it. They are the first ones to bring innovation to the market. The adoption happens there. The customer or the consumer behavior changes there. That then needs to flow into the rest of the industry. Depends on which industry you are, how, how progressively you want to go or how slow you want to go. But eventually, those technologies will flow in every aspect of the industry. And even within your organizations, 
to deal with your own employees. I think that is bound to happen. So is your stack agile enough to absorb those technologies? We had uh, the new mediums, the social media came in, we had the Facebook selling, the Instagram, we had the, uh, you know, now the chat GPT, right? So it's all, these are all mediums and these are all technologies, but is your organization agile enough to absorb these technologies and create processes and models which are relevant to the customers on these channels, right? I think very, very important uh, in our perspective. Uh, if you're not agile, you'll not be able to keep up, you'll not be able to match up to the competition, forget differentiating. So third concept, which is built on this, these two is, I think this is what we talk about a lot today. We read about a lot. Everyone is talking, uh, the buzzword is AI. I think AI has been around for a while now, few decades rather, uh, in the form of machine learning, in the form of, we've been using AI in different processes. Uh, I would say in context in very, very micro domains. So what has happened today? I think with this, large learning models or generative AI, the ability of AI to absorb the amount of data and give relevant output has increased many folds. I think that will be a key, key inflection point in the way AI is used going forward. So essentially, what does it do? So if we go at a very, very, uh, you know, fundamental level, what generative AI is doing is personalization. I think when today we use it in the form of a chat GPT, that is the first exposure we've got. When we use that, what we get is a personalized response, right? So it's all about personalization in context of the individual who is using that system or interacting with the system. So if we scale this up, this would mean personalization will happen at scale. So organizations will be able to personalize for every consumer or every customer who is interacting with the organization. I think that's how we extrapolate it. And if that is true, right, uh, the models are democratized. The, the platforms are democratized. Each and every company will use the same algorithms. We have key players in the market who are bringing this, whether it's open, sorry, open AI or Google or Microsoft, right? By and large, most organizations will end up building applications on those platforms. So what will be the differentiation? I think the differentiation will be what you know about your customers, how you're training those models with the knowledge you have gathered about the customers. I think so in this entire space, more than the artificial intelligence as a technology, it will be the training model or the data you feed to train the AI will become your differentiator. If you, if you know more about the customer, you can personalize better with your interactions. I think that will start differentiating uh, your organization in the marketplace. So, uh, so this was the third principle I wanted to talk about. So ability to capture data, uh, simplify it, and feed it into a model is a very, very important skill set and a capability you need to have. Last one, I think if you're capturing data, uh, this takes center stage. So why will customers give you data and trust you with that? I think we've all, uh, uh, we all need to change the way we look at capturing data from the consumers. I think it's very, very important we use it as a, a financial currency. When a customer pays us, right, we, we are giving a product or a service which is commensurate to that. Now, if you apply the same principles in data, if somebody is sharing data with an organization, what is the customer getting in return? Do we, are we doing that kind of accounting within our organizations? Are we looking, you know, if, if somebody is sharing an incremental piece of information, how do I put it to use both for the consumer and for organization to either become more efficient or be more relevant to the consumer? I think that kind of accounting is very, very important to be done uh, in this space. Otherwise, we end up capturing tons of data and we don't know what to do with that. We have data lakes, we have so many systems within our organizations, but unless we put a financial currency in place, equivalent model for data, we will not get the desired outcome. So I think this is very, very important. Even the law is uh, coming after this now because it has to be, it is in interest of the consumers. 
So I think these were the four principles. If you bring it together, the front office, back office connection, the agility to adapt, the AI and the data you are training to, you know, the, the AI model, the data you're feeding into that, and trust and consent. If you bring all the four together, that is what, how we see customer experience getting defined for all organizations across industries. It may, it may vary in the way it is interpreted, but this, these are the standard principles which we see followed across the globe and across the industries. So I think I'll, I'll stop here. I thought it will be good to share those things. So thank you so much. Hope you enjoy the sessions today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Sudeep, for that uh, wonderful keynote. Sudeep, I would request you to kindly be on stage as we would like to extend our token of appreciation with a small felicitation to you. Thank you.